Everybody, it's Chuck and I am out in the shop. I got the dogs out with me, and yes, the tractor is still here. The most requested video I have ever had is how to how to paint your own jigs. Uh, it really took off probably because of all the hair jig patterns that I would put on Facebook. Um, over on here on YouTube, when I did my tournament hair jig uh, video, that became huge. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to show you every step I take. I'm going to show you the materials I use, the products I use, some little tips, um, some options if you don't like this. Um, I'm not saying you're not going to like it, but there are some ways to make it better. I'm doing what I have uh, that I have. And then I want to have the jigs themselves. Now, if you know what you want, but you don't want to invest into buying lead and melting lead, pouring lead, um, you can buy them. They're unpainted everywhere. Uh, again, you could go to TJ's Tackle. They've got a great selection, including the ultra minnow heads that I use for these hair jigs that I'm going to show you how I paint tonight. You know, this is one that I had tied up left over from last year. I did use it in the Detroit River. That's a one ounce, what I call hot wings, and that is a white base. It's a blaze orange back. It's got some black specks on it, and then I've got it tied up with white and blaze orange craft fur from Airline. I do have a trailer in the middle, and I've got one of my and tight stinger hooks. And as I mentioned in the last video about getting ready for Detroit, that stinger hook is running behind that tail. If the fish is going to hit it, it's going to miss it back there. I've got it rigged up with a St. Croix Icon Heavy Fast. This is the heavy metal of the lineup. And I've got just a, a Daiwa LT Revos. This is a 2000. And I love this rod. It's not my most expensive rod by any means. And it's not just because I was lucky enough to be chosen to help in the evaluation of this rod. But look how that loads up. You know, it, they say it's heavy fast. And I agree, it's fast. But it's got enough, just enough, I hate the word soft, but... I call it like a medium heavy extra fast. I love this rod. This is just a rod anybody could fish with in Detroit. Runs about $140. And then you got another $40, $30 or $40 in the reel. Running 10 pound braid with 10 pound leader. I know a lot of people go down to six in Detroit. Well, except for that show and tell thing fiasco. Uh, you know, the people that usually run that are doing the mid-bay bite. And the river is just loaded with jacks. And you can get a limit in 30 minutes and get the heck out. I'm not doing that. You know, I grew up on the river. If you saw the handline uh, video I did. I was born up there. I was born at Wyandotte General before it came Henry Ford or whatever the hell it's called now. Um, my folks were from Wyandotte and E-Course. Grandpa was a bootlegger. Uh, so, you know, I have a soft spot for Detroit. But I know I can do better and bigger fish are easier to catch out in Lake Erie. So once the Michigan Walleye Tour is done, I'm gone. You won't see me in Detroit again unless the lake is just blowing and the river has got a bite. So I go back up there. I normally run 5 8 uh, If I had to be out in current, I would drop down one ounce like around the bridge or the post office. But the main thing about this video is I'm showing you how to powder paint those things. Uh, I, I call that wild or hot wings. I get my inspiration 
from a lot of places. Uh, one of my favorite dark jigs, um, I call it the blue line. And that's when the cops were really getting a bad rep. And it was a black and blue flake uh, powder. And I did a blue inner core with a black outer layer. And that jig has been great in warm weather months. Uh, even on some of the jigs I did that were only an eighth ounce, they were catching bass and such up in the upper peninsula up the cabin. But, so we went through, you, know, you can get everything you need to get started over at TJ's pipe, except for the four sets and such, and maybe one or two other things. There's two ways, three ways to heat up your lead on the jig, or the hook. Toaster oven, you can get a, what I call a two-story toaster oven, where you got all the blank jigs, you know, you powder paint them, uh, you set them aside, and I'll show you how I do that also. And then you pick the next one out of the toaster oven, right? Then you got your fluid, oh, heat gun, this is the way I actually do it. This one takes about two minutes to heat up, three quarter ounce. I'm looking at about 15 seconds, 15 Mississippis, and then I go to the powder. If I am doing, and I always am, like multiple sizes in the same color, this thing will run for like 20 minutes solid. I've had this one for two years and it is not burned up yet because I learned a really good lesson. When I'm finally done, I've had it on hot for like, like I said, 20 minutes. I will switch it over to cold. And then five minutes later, four minutes later, as soon as that hot air is done blowing and I can touch this, I will shut it down. The engine, the heating core, whatever it is that throws sparks when I shut it off after it's hot makes it last a lot longer. I don't use a torch, and I had to for this video. The heat gun is just way too loud. You never would have heard me. It would have been ridiculous. So the torch, that's it's an option. You heat it up a lot faster, uh, but then you you got a lot of, a lot of run time with the gas. It's running, and you don't, you're not heating anything up. So that's one thing. All right. Then I go to the fluid bed, and like I mentioned, I get all my stuff from tjstackle.com. Nice Facebook page, too. You can go there and find out my different color combinations or how I came up with this. Uh, my good buddy, Adam Marchbanks, doing steelhead stuff. Roy Miller from Fat Boy Jigs commenting in things. Uh, Taylor Rob, good old Taylor Rob, that dude's awesome. But we all share our ideas right there, and you can learn them too. All right. I, when I buy these three inch cups, and you can get a two inch for the smaller sizes, don't do it. If you're ever going to go do a heavier jig, five eighths, three quarter, one ounce, or higher, just get the three inch cup and be done. Don't have to set up having multiples. That's just a pain in the, you know what I mean? So I've got white in here right now. I try to figure out all my base patterns, whether I'm using a yellow for Fire Tiger, uh, maybe like a bubble gum without a white base on it. But I've got white. I do a Huckleberry slash Wild Thing. I do the Hot Wings. Uh, I can do a Rainbow Trout. And I can do plain old white, which the wall I love on Lake Erie. So I can do at least five different jigs with this white. It's got its own dedicated cup. Right. I only do two with this one, and this is Disco Copper. And I'll do this with a candy red or a candy green when I make my copper perch. Um, I hate to call it a bass pattern, but copper and walleye, you know what I mean. See that black line right there? That is one inch from the bottom of the cup up. This will help ensure you, you do not vacuum seal this thing into the fluid bed. It is a bear to get off. And at least one time I had powder flying anywhere, everywhere. 
These are going to be my highlight colors. And today I'm going to show you a sexy shad. Uh, you could call it a huckleberry if I added the black to it. And I'm taking a pair of short forceps. Make sure they can clamp on tight because sometimes you're using a real heavy jig and it'll start to bend it down. I've got another pair over here. Again, both of these I pretty much scrapped from ice fishing because couldn't get my fingers in there with gloves. Right? So what I do with these, you're not going to see that stuff, but I'll describe it. When the jig clamps come out of the toaster oven after their curing process, these help pull them out. Could you do it with both of them? Absolutely. But, again, I'm usually painting while the stuff is curing, pulling them in and out. It's a process. Different types of brushes. This new fan brush that I started using, I love it. It's coat, one side, one side. And I take the other one and it's one, maybe two over the top and I'm done. And if I'm still adding accents to the top of the jig, I will push this in, tip it over the hot jig and get my accents. But before I would do a one, two, three, four, like one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. It's a process. It's a time consumer. All right, powder paints, fans, or the brushes. From this process, they are going to go into the water. That gives me an opportunity to go ahead and cool everything down so I can hang them up here on this coffee can until my next step. And my next step is going to put them into a jig clamp. Again, TJ's tackle. I will put these, depending on the size of the jig, six to four on each one. 350 degrees at 20 minutes. By the time they cool off, I can drop them on the cement floor out here in the shop, and that paint will not chip. Finished product. Now, if somehow I manage to goof up, and it's practically every night, and I get too much powder on there, my eye is covered, I will take this rotary tool, and I will zip, zip, once all the jigs are done, everything else is unplugged, zip, zip, it's out, ready to go fish. It's got a diamond thing on it. You're not roughing up the eye. You're not taking off too much material, the bronze or whatever black nickel that you're using. And you're done. It's crystal clear. You can tie on. Once you powder paint, once you uh, cure in the oven, it's pretty much chip proof. So your normal eye buster is not going to work. Now the guys often over at TJ's will say, you could heat up a wire and run it through it. Do I need a wire for every size hook I'm gonna use? Some of the some of the eyes are bigger. That's not gonna work. Rotary tool, you're done. It's easy. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to push off the heat gun because I'm not gonna use it. This is Something I never use. In fact, I got away with it because when I first had my first apartment, I was painting my own jigs. Um, ice fishing jigs. It does not take very long for an ice fishing jig where the lead melts right off the hook. And I like the heat gun. It gives me time to get the next step done. I'm always thinking about it. So, I couldn't run the heat gun. I don't have the two-story uh, toaster oven for running the hot lead prior to this. So, just about five, six seconds. When that lead starts to get nice and shiny like it just came out of the, the hot pot, it's ready to go. And then, usually I tilt it just like this. And it is done. Look at that.
perfect coat, not a lot. I'm doing a huckleberry. So I'm taking candy yellow and I'm putting uh, two stripes on one on each side on what would be the fish's lateral line. Again, this fan tail brush, I'm done. And I might have had to do two, four different applications with it. And I'm going to do two on the back just so I can get some overlap on the sides. That's ready to go. I'm going to give it just, whoop, it's done. So what would you call that? I'd call it a sexy shad. If I was going to add the black to it, then I would call it wild thing. Why would you call that wild thing? Somebody was going to ask me. I know it. So, I don't steal ideas from other painters. I might personally do it, but I'm never going to say, Ooh, look what I created. There are people out there, believe it or not, even in the jig painting world. That's cooled off, and now I can put that on the coffee pot. I can shut this off because that's going to be the last jig I'm going to do tonight for the video. And so where do I get my ideas from? Well, back in the early 2000s, I started hand painting my own Colorado blades. And where did I get the inspiration from back then? Reef Runner was huge. That company probably had the craziest colors. Um... For any crank uh, in the country at that time. And the other source of inspiration was salmon spoons. I would look at the things that Chip Cartwright was producing for Silver Streak, you know, Wolverine Tackle. And I'm going, son of a gun. That would look good on the Colorado. Then I started looking, go, that looked really good on a jig when I started tying my own hair. So. You know, getting your inspiration from any source you can. I'm still looking to be brave enough one day to do a NASCAR version. Sometimes I just don't see the, uh, I don't know if the wall I really go for it, but I still like the idea. Why do I say nice NASCAR when I meant cheap sunglasses? Because they're very similar. Anyway, to wrap up. Powder paint. I have a stir stick. You could use a plastic knife, a plastic spoon. You want to shake that up. Powder is heavy. It condenses. When you stick it in the fluid bed, it might not start looking very fluidy. You know, right now that is just perfect. Right? If you think you're getting too many peaks or multiple volcanoes in your fluid bed, just shake it around a little bit. Let me get this thing out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Just shake it around. Get it loose after you've already done the stir. It's great. It works. Again, your jigs. You can pour it yourself, and that's half the fun. I can pick the hooks I want. I can pick the style of jig mold or jig mold I want. Um, love my smelter. Got my clamps. Got my jigs. Got my brushes. Got my different highlight colors. Got my base colors. Got my forceps, different styles of brushes that do different things for me. Uh, you know, it used to take me probably at least three, four times as long when I would go like this and dip it or just tap it over the jig. Now I got the fans and it's just one tap. That side's done. One tap. The next side's done. Wasn't really sure this is that fan thing was a brand new thing for me this year. Wasn't really sure how it was going to work out. Love it. Um, heat gun, toaster oven, jig clamps from TJ's. Like how fast the torch is. Don't like how fast or how long I'm wasting the flame and the gas in between while I'm doing my different patterns. Um, next week's the MD, uh, MWT. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a video done. Should be able to get some hand lining, at least get some shots out there. 
Check it out on Facebook. You can find me on Fishing Michigan Chuck Mason. You can also find my personal page at Fishing Guys. Sometimes I get some fishing leaked over there, but the main stuff is going to be over on Fishing Michigan. And of course, you can always find me here. Subscribe and like if you haven't already. You know, if you don't, it's not like I'm making money on this thing.